I want to welcome you to the show, man. I want to welcome one of the hottest artists up and coming, especially out in the game right now, especially on TikTok and social media, making his way through Brooklyn Zone. Jufu, welcome to the show, Sports Hip Hop yes, with DJ sir. Mad Max. Nice to meet you, mate. Are you from New York? By the way? I'm, I'm from Connecticut, but I graduated from St. John's, so I'm well aware of what New York is like. You, you, you definitely, you, you carry a lot of New York energy. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. And New York is a second home to me. Um, I can't wait to get out there and do some more work once this pandemic is officially over, but we have some time to get through that. We'll get into all that, how you've been during this time, but you, you have a lot on the way here, man. So how's everything been going with you in recent times? Bro, I mean, I just been, I just been cooking a lot. I mean, as of recently, definitely uh, times have changed a lot, especially with the new year. Um, I, I'm doing a lot of different things this year and, um, because I want to tackle a lot of different tasks, I need to like master my time management. And um, yeah, I've been I've been going to sleep at eleven thirty p.m. as of recently, waking up at five thirty a.m. and just starting my day like that. Before I would be going to sleep at like five in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I can't break my habit of going to bed until like three a.m. So I, I applaud you for that for going to bed at eleven thirty. But <laughs> I'm a I'm a night owl. I felt that. I feel that. <laughs> You're How were you able to thing. just adjust to that sleeping schedule? Is just you just making sure that you went to bed earlier? Yeah, bro. It was just it was just making sure I go to sleep earlier for sure. That 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 made the biggest difference. And I feel I feel so much better. It's like every day I wake up now, I get excited for like a new adventure because it's like I know I have so much time in the day, especially like the morning time, which like no one else is awake. So it's like you get to just focus and like do whatever you gotta do. We're going to get into everything here. I want to go from the very beginning of you growing up in Brooklyn. Tell me how life was a growing up in Brooklyn. Growing up in Brooklyn, see, um, you know, my life was, was very, was very, very calm. I got to say personally, um, you know, I got the, I got the citizen app on my phone. Mm -hmm. So I see everything that's going on around me. Like all the, like, bro, it, it's, it's kind of, it, it's, I really want to see a change happen in Brooklyn, bro. It's just too much, like, way too much violence going on, bro. But, um, like, for me personally, I mean, growing up was 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 pretty, pretty chill. I gotta say, um, definitely elementary school was 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 a vibe. I don't really like. I mean, I don't really remember much of it. Yeah. But um, all I know is that the schools that I went to. Versus like elementary school, going into middle school, um, definitely played like the biggest impact on my life. Cause like, I wouldn't have, my career wouldn't have started if I went to like everyone from my elementary school basically went to like this, like 99% of the students went into this one specific middle school and me and this one other student in the graduating class got into a specific middle school called Cunningham. And if I didn't go to that school, I, I don't think I would be exactly where I am today at all <laughs> <laughs> a Brooklyn kid you're growing up into the mecca of hip-hop which is New York what was your introduction to hip-hop I know your introduction to music was when you picked up the guitar we'll get into that but what was your introduction to hip-hop as a listener hip-hop I mean I want to say I picked up listening to hip-hop more more in high school for sure because um my high school had Joey Badass Capital Steez, like the whole Pro Era Collective. Unfortunately, I wasn't there when they were there. I went in like literally like a year after Joey dropped out. And um, yeah, I mean, that that's really where it started. But like before, before hip hop, I grew up really listening to like Michael Jackson, Haitian music, because I'm, I'm from Haiti. Mm -hmm. um, and like, I just really just bumping what, what my parents were listening to. <laughs> I like the Michael Jackson thing that which you reference as an artist being inspired by Michael because Jackson, he, he influences no everyone. Lie, is the first time I ever cried about so over over a death was Michael Jackson. That, I remember that, when that, that happened. It was crazy. It was unexpected. No one thought that he was going to die out of nowhere. Facts. Now every time you go on Twitter, it's expectant. He's a legend, man. Rest in peace, the the king of pop. Would you say that he's the greatest artist of all time? I gotta say that's subjective, but he's definitely like he's just he's just up there. Like he's just he's like he's he's one of the untouchables, I guess you could say. <laughs> <laughs> 
we're going to get into you picking up the guitar. Your parents gave you the guitar. How was it the first time trying it out and getting involved with that? Because that would only further your way into knowing how to play instruments and into this music scene that you're in right now. Honestly, man, like, there's one thing I'm, I'm very, very thankful. Um, my, my, my folks, my parents, they, they, they try to put me on as many things as possible just so like I could like just figure out what I like, et cetera. I, I played basketball. I, I did karate, played golf. Like I, I've, I've, I've done a lot of different things. And guitar was one of those things that my parents put me into when I was nine years old. And um, when I, when I first got into it, it was fun, but then it started to become repetitive and being at the age that I was, I really just wanted to like play video games with my friends on the weekends instead of go to guitar class. Mm -hmm. So it was like, I was very like pushy against it. Like I would get like, just get tired in class and stuff like that. But I still stayed in guitar lessons from like age nine up to like 15. So I had, I had a good amount of years doing it. And I honestly got to say like, I'm so thankful for it because having that skill now and then developing the passion later on, like it would have been so much more difficult to have to learn guitar three years ago, as opposed to if I didn't have like all the background with it already. It props you for learning how to play the guitar and just going through with that, because not many people, especially young kids at your age are interested in just getting involved with anything else. Usually that they're just sticking to one thing, but you're willing to try different interests. And that's because of your parents, you mentioned golf. I actually played golf when I was younger, so I can relate to that. I felt that now, but, but just to add on to what you just said, with like, with, with trying everything, that's, that's one thing I definitely want to like be an example for. Like you don't have to box yourself into one lane. Like if you, if you have a passion for like me being behind the camera, but also being in front of the camera, performing, rapping, et cetera. Like you don't need to limit yourself to that one thing. Like do everything that you makes you happy as long as you're enjoying what you're doing and you're doing it. (laughs) You're exactly right. A big inspiration to you, which as soon as I listened to your discography and I went through, because I always listen to my guest discographies, I went right through it. And I said that you remind me a lot of XXX. And I know that you had a spiritual connection with him. And I've heard you describe it before that you had a conversation with him, just you wanting to carry on his legacy in a spiritual way. So if you can go into that further, if you want, because I know he was such a huge inspiration to you and you can hear it in your music. You know, that, that's a really, um, I, I, I get, I get comparisons a lot. Um, I think, I think he was a very, 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 um, phenomenal phenomenal artist and I, I definitely don't want people to like misinterpret my my trajectory yeah no no my career with his but definitely I feel like he um it it's 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 honestly like I can go I can kind of go into a very very long story which I don't want to even get into because it's very extensive because it's just like it's just trippy the way that um certain things resonate between his life experiences and some of mine um but overall i i I was introduced to his music initially in 2016 um through an ex-girlfriend of mine and um his music just started to grow on me over a span of like two years and definitely around the time of his passing i was definitely a major supporter of his music um by that time already and I, I went to uh to in LA there was like a big riot when when he passed away and I was I was there for that and it was just so much like I feel like that that definitely had a uh impact on on me seeing how impactful his life was for 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 many other people and seeing that his life brought all these people that didn't know each other together mm-hmm. and like the conversations that people strangers were having with each other at that riot and like the unconditional love that people were having for each other. I think that really, that really moved me. Um, and he, he talked about different things like manifestation and, and frequency, energy, et cetera. Um, these were things that I wasn't really hip with um, before listening to his music. Um, 
And after his passing, I decided to like do more research and, and learn more about what he would be talking about. Um, and that kind of just led me into a major path of self-discovery um, and understanding and looking within self. I feel like that's something that's very important to do. Um, and it really just like, I mean, I, I, overall, I feel like he, he's, he opened a door for me to, to understand myself and look more, and be more introspective when it comes to, to life. And I, I'm very, very grateful for that. Cause I feel like everyone at some point in their life, um, is, it's a, the greatest blessing of all, if you can start to look within yourself and anything that can trigger that is, is an absolute blessing. So that's really it for, for him. Everything that you describe right there is what you can gauge just off of listening to his discography. He was different. There was no one like him in the game. You're doing what you're doing out there. Do you feel as though that XXX has gotten the flowers that he's rightfully deserved in the industry wise? Because I feel as though the fans are loyal. People like you who are supporters of him, your presence is known, but do you feel as though the industry has given them the credit that's due? I would say yes and no. And any of the no's, I feel like just hasn't really like looked beyond the surface of him and like hasn't really actually tapped in to see exactly um, what he stood for and the type of music and like what his music was. But um, yeah, that's that. Yeah. <laughs> All the sudden. Think, um, definitely. Yeah, it, it's it, it's subjective at the end of the day. Yeah, for sure. All of a sudden, you're in eighth grade, I believe, at the age of 13, when you start getting involved with social media. Vine was out. You get involved with that. Comedy Kings, I think, was the the friends that you had at that time. They were making yeah, some things, some my parodies. Boys, yeah, Jack and Yuri. <laughs> they were making some parodies online on social media they were using things and your voice was selling a lot of the videos on the platforms and was actually going viral and actually there was a lot of numbers from the traction from just your voice and you get involved with all these platforms you start to go viral but there was a time where you took a break because you wanted to focus on your music and expand it from social media you didn't want to be boxed in you wanted to make music that could help you financially outside of social media to be a household name in this game. Right. That was definitely, I want to say one of the, uh, one of the bigger, I, I took a big lesson from taking that break. Um, we live in a day and age where social media is very, very, very important when it comes to getting your music out there. Mm -hmm. And I was telling myself, you know, I can't be making videos on social media if I want to be taken seriously as an artist. And I think that was just a simple insecurity that a lot of, um, a lot of a lot of people that make music i've noticed and it's not even and it's not even just myself and i think it just needs to stop it's just a it's a mental, it's a personal internal thing um people tend to i guess you know what it is a lot of people have trouble transitioning from the from making content to making music and getting respect in the music world when they didn't start in music. But at the end of the day, it's like, that's something I had to uh, get over and understand that the talent is always gonna speak louder than necessarily what, what it look, wh where you started from or where you came from. I think talent always, always outshines that. And I, I had agree. To, like, I definitely had to get over that hurdle. <laughs> you, you die back into the TikTok realm, which was well worth it because you would start to gain traction on there from the record, whoa your songs that you were releasing on there and eventually getting that, that legendary Will Smith to give you that recognition. A wise man once said, who are you? I am you. I'm you. Yo, bro. I swear. All right. I, did you see the recent Spider-Man? I did not. I did not see bro, it, but I, I heard it's great. Spider-Man Spider -Man was like one of my favorite heroes from like, since I was, since Spider-Man has been around. Um, and once you see it, don't quote, I mean, quote me on this if you want. I'm very convinced that that almost the whole movie was inspired by my, by my song. Really? That's crazy. <laughs> Bro, there was, 
because when the Who Are You song came out, there was a Spider-Man pointing at Spider-Man meme that really, that just, that went everywhere um, be- because of that song. Mm-hmm. And when you see the video, I mean, when you see the movie, you understand exactly where I'm coming from. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's actually, it's funny. I have to check that out. Once it releases, I know you're, you're big in the film. I read on somewhere online. Is, did you go to film school or, or is it that you want to go to film school? I want to clarify that because I did read something online about that. After high school, um, I went into FIT, mm-hmm. Fashion Institute of Technology in Manhattan. Okay. Uh, I got into their film program. They only accepted 30 people per year, which was, I was very lucky to be one of those people. And um after my first year, I ended up dropping out because of everything that was happening with music. But on top of that, too, I felt like certain certain fields in college, you don't really need to be s- studying in college. No, like yes. certain things that you can learn all the skills outside of school and work on that craft outside of school. And I felt like film was one of those things. Like there's some of my favorite directors haven't went to film school and they're very, very successful in their lane. Um and just speaking of that, I actually recently partnered with a company called World Strides. That's right. I was going to yeah, bring that up. Yeah. Congratulations. So, um, that, that, thank you, man. Um, and like, what's really awesome about that program is like, people get to basically go travel the world with me and literally do different like activities and explore different cultures. And the whole purpose of it really is to give students the opportunity to see if school is really gonna be for them or if they can, or if they have this passion outside of school that they can develop outside of school. And um, I feel like because of exactly what I went through with college and taking that step away from college and really taking a bet on myself, it really like, it's like the perfect, the perfect partnership and the perfect, opportunity for me to be providing for people so super awesome and grateful for that where did your love and passion of filmmaking come from honestly gotta say um from making from making videos on social media and to be very specific um there's a youtuber named casey neistat um mm-hmm. uh, he's he's an og youtuber like he's his vlogs were the where i used to watch his vlogs every single day because he had a daily vlog and um, I actually met him twice just in LA casually. We had the same flight from New York once and then in like VidCon we met. But basically his vlogs, they weren't just like the everyday vlog. And he's definitely he's a major inspiration for a lot of YouTubers as well. But um, his vlogs were very cinematic and he would always have like these like kind of music video-esque type parts in his video that like, transition to just to like kill time and like show that he's like moving throughout the day and I would start I started um doing a little bit of vlogs like daily vlogs um in sophomore year in high school and I started just trying to do all those cinematic shots as well and I think I just definitely realized that I had an eye for it and every time I was doing it I was sharpening my eye um and then building on that in in high school my music technology teacher, which is, we're going to talk about that program too. Um, he actually put me in charge of the budget for the camera for the class. Wow. And um, he let me pick out a camera, pick out the equipment, and I got to like shoot stuff to promote the class and get more students in the program. And um, I just kept sharpening my eye over time, really. And you're proving to just go further in that lane as well, because that's a passion of yours. I know that you manifest everything and that's important in seeing your own vision come true. What types of movies do you think that you would love to direct, especially with the eye that you have? You know, it's really interesting. I really like, I really like low light. Like I really like shooting in the dark and like messing with lighting. I'm not a big fan of like shooting in the daytime. Um, I normally gravitate towards like, horror type of settings but i don't really watch horror movies like that but when it comes to like looking through the lens i really enjoy shooting things that like seem very like creepy or scary so um whatever i start shooting in the future is gonna be along the lines of like horror sci-fi and action for sure but um as of right now like i have a production company it's called extra loud and the main focus right now is just music videos 
that's going to expand into short films and then Netflix and all these other, there's going to be a bunch of different streaming platforms that eventually will be able to pick up things that I create. It's interesting you bring up horror because if you look at the who are you video, are there's you? some, yeah, there, there, there's some elements in there. The video is so, it's so different from the sound of the song. Yeah. But <laughs> that, that, that's a pure example of where my mind usually goes with, with being behind the camera. <laughs> they got to call you up for the scream movie. Everyone's all hyped up about I'm, I'm, Hey, they got to call you up. I, I don't know. Are they going to surpass Wes Craven's version? I don't know. We got to see, man. Is it going to be like on Netflix or is it going to be in theaters? I think it's just in theaters, but I'm so hesitant to go out right now with Omicron running rampant all over the place. Right. But I may it's be willing gonna, to take the step out to go see it. I feel like most movies as of recently have been coming out on like in the movies, but then also on some type of streaming service because of because of COVID. Like you'll yeah. find a variant of it, variant, <laughs> a version of the movie on like <laughs> HBO, Netflix, Hulu, et cetera. Yeah. I know Hopefully they did that for Halloween Kills, so I hope Scream does the same so I don't have to risk anything going out to the movie theaters. Be safe, man. Universal. Tell me about you signing the deal with Universal. Yeah, I, I, I signed with Universal um two years ago now, um, in October 2019. That was a it was a process. Um after the Who Are You so, well, after the Woe song, I had about one label reach out to me. And I feel like I would have been more, but I wasn't really getting credit for the song when it was going viral everywhere. No one was tagging me. Um, but with the Who Are You song, that changed a lot because of the way that I released it. Like I made sure all the marks that I missed when releasing Well, I corrected that for the release of Who Are You two months later. And um, I had about 15 different record labels reaching out to me after releasing that song. And kind of after going to a bunch of different meetings in, in LA and New York, it was down between two different labels. It was Arista and Island. And I ended up going with, um, with Island, Island Universal. Um, but it was a process of like, I want to say like four months of just talking to different labels, having to speak with a lawyer. And it was just something that I never even imagined my career getting to. And it's, now I look back at things like this and it's like, I look back at like old videos or like, there's like one of my first videos on YouTube is like, I was 13 years old. just like, yo, uh, I only got like 800 followers, but I think I got potential to go somewhere. And like, I look back at that kid and I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm actually very, very proud to see where he's come. It's, it's crazy. You've spoken in existence. When did manifestation begin for you? That that's that's when I that's when I started to look that's more right, that moment. Self. Look looking more within self. Like I didn't even realize I was manifesting things until until like I said, like summer like summer twenty eighteen when I started to just read a lot of books, um, read a lot, learn about the subconscious mind, learning about just learning more about spirituality, learning about looking more within self, essentially. And I learned like bro, I have like I have notebooks right behind, literally right behind this camera filled with just notes, thoughts, theories from my mind, like tons of stuff. And it's like, sometimes I find myself like giving advice to some people and I'm like, and I have to step back like, whoa, when did I even like learn all this stuff? And then I go back to these notebooks and I'm like, yo, I was really like into just studying the mind, studying the soul, understanding why we operate the way we do, how we make things come to existence, et cetera. Like I was very, 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 very into it. And it's something that I still am very obsessed with. I, t I, I don't really like to even, like, I personally, I always say, I, I don't like, I don't like to have too many like surface level conversations. Cause these are like the things that my mind is like always thinking about on a regular I know negative energy always comes your way and you just figure out a way to go past it. I've heard you say that before and I got to applaud you on that as well because when I try manifesting, I, the, the temptation is always there. I'm telling you. <laughs> it's just nonstop, but you've managed to go past it and that's all that matters here. You got the new deal. 
You have a lot on the way here. Social media, what's your take on algorithms? Because you always hear the word algorithms with social media, but it seems as though that you've mastered it being able to go viral so many times. Yo, uh, this is a conversation I, t- I speak about a lot. Um, I dropped a song called Circles, like, I want to say three, four months ago. The hook of it will fly past by, I mean, the hook of it will fly past by, fly by a lot of people's head. But um, everyone that watches this, I really recommend you listen to the song and listen to the second verse. I'm like, I'm sick of this internet shit as bad as smoking cigarettes. You message with your mental anxiety. Look like I've been in text and people are way too damaged. Can't see the source, but they won't tell you that. Check all on my homies. Every day don't know when it is our last. How you doing? How you feeling? What's good? Just send a simple text. Don't know what the next man been going through. Or when they hide and stress comparisons and the drama fake news. It's messing with my head. Some people getting stressed over views, but it's all in your head. So basically, I feel like a lot of people on social media, especially when you when you get some sort of success on social media and then you have to keep like leveling up and stepping up it just gets more and more difficult and what makes it not um necessarily i guess easier is that um algorithms kind of determine a lot of a lot of what's going to be seen and what's not going to be seen for a lot of people and um the reason why I was mentioning the song is just like i feel like Something needs to be reformed in some sort of way because I feel that people's mental health is is taking a toll due to social media and not really receiving that, not always receiving the, the what's the word I'm looking for? The, the hit of dopamine or, or gratitude for... Um, or getting the certain amount of likes, et cetera. Um, so I, I really feel like um, overall, one thing I just want to advise the people is not to pay attention to likes like that. Don't pay attention to, to the views. Focus on who's watching your videos. Focus on who's receiving value from your videos. And focus on enjoying what you're creating most importantly um in the cleanest way possible oh yeah i was i was gonna i was gonna curse i'd never curse but screw algorithms <laughs> <laughs> do what you want to do love what you do keep creating and allow people to just find it and if the algorithm's gonna work or not just kind of just let it rock man <laughs> I know this is a sports show as well. If people have been following you for a long time, you've also been involved with Madden. That was huge yes. for you, man. That was Yo, huge. Oh my gosh. Yo, so the Just Do It song, we made it um about a year. Uh, not I'm not gonna say a year, probably a couple months, almost a year before it was actually picked up by Madden. And it's just crazy because we made it like just all right, this is a cool song, just do it. Like we're strategically making a song that if Nike hears it, they could potentially pick it up. Um, and that was really just the intention behind it. It was a fun song. It was like, let's see what we can do. Let's see if we can pull a crazy Nike deal. And um, we ended up getting the song in the system. Like just because I'm with a label, it, it gives you a little bit leverage in terms of getting your song um, on certain TV shows or or in certain systems essentially. Um, so just do it ended up being, uh, it was kind of like a, a decision between, and it wasn't up to me. It was kind of up to the companies, but it was between Madden, which is EA or space jams, the movie, the new space jams, which it would have been crazy if it was both, but, um, Madden ended up picking it up and, um, it was in Madden 21 and I think it, it bled into Madden 22 as well. And because of the song, we also got the opportunity to have like a custom Jufu outfit in the game and everything like a that. Brooklyn and design. Everything. Yeah. And the outfit was in Madden 22 as well. And I mean, it was, it was super, super, such a vibe. We shot the music video for it. One of my first like music videos that just had a whole production team, just, like everything. It was, it was a, it was a very great experience overall. Um, 
just putting that whole song together but it was it was a it was a process it was quite the process lots of zoom meetings with ea um zoom meetings with just the directors and i'm i'm, I'm very glad with the way it came out i got a, another song that i made for madden definitely i'm gonna put, pitch it for madden 23 it's called beast mode i don't know if you follow football but um I do. Marshawn, lynch, Marshawn lynch the seahawks yeah yeah that song goes hard so once once madden hears well once ea hears it they're gonna want it <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna want to take that one and add that to their soundtrack too i could i could hear that be and bro it would be the craziest thing ever if marshawn was just like you know what let me just go back to the league again because why not <laughs> the timing would be impeccable <laughs> it would be growing up in new york are you a fan of new york sports so i personally i'm not gonna lie I don't follow sports that much. I find myself being like very, very just like, like I've invest most of my time into studying music, crypto and like new technology, like AI, Web3, NFTs, et cetera, and film stuff. And I feel like that that's literally where most of my time is occupied so therefore i don't really get the time to like follow sports like that crypto i i, I did to- read online that you're involved with crypto what attracted you to crypto because some people may think it's a scam but what, why why should people follow crypto and nfts opportunities are crazy mm-hmm. right now in in the crypto space um the the u.s dollar is just as time goes by and um we need a we need some form of reform with our with our financial system and and just the way that money is distributed. So over the over this next these next 10 years, you're gonna see crypto being adopted way more and more and more and more and more. And I think anyone who's getting into it now in this beginning of the decade is going to be very thankful that they did um by the end of the decade. So um I got into crypto initially because when I took that break from social media that we were talking about, mm-hmm. I wanted to still be making money because most of my, my income was from social media. So I took a little break and I was like, let me start making money online somehow. So I started making like e-commerce stores, like drop shipping, uh, getting into like Amazon FBA and all these different things. And a lot of these YouTubers who I was following for tips and um, just advice on making these stores, they were also into crypto. So I got into introduced to just crypto and the many opportunities and just the rising opportunities in crypto through those YouTubers. And I ended up buying my first Bitcoin when I was 17 for 11K. And the market had a crazy crash at the end of 2017, lost all that money. But it was one of those experiences like that you're very thankful for because you learn from it. And I'm a much better trader since then. And um, that's really where where crypto started for me. And I've been just obsessed with studying charts and just finding like the next the next hundred x thousand x gain. Like you can literally put a hundred dollars in some tokens and make ten thousand dollars back in a year or a couple months. Like you don't see that in the stock market. You don't see that in a savings account. No, <laughs> it's people need to get on. <laughs> You're involved in all areas, especially in this entertainment industry. Another one is fashion and designing with Puma. So we uh I did a, a collaboration with Puma thanks to TikTok that um actually brought up that opportunity. And um I got a clothing brand right here. It's called I'm just vibing. The idea for it is I'm just trying to promote staying in the present moment. So the way I look at things is like when you're very anxious or when you're facing anxiety is something in the future that you're, that you're worried about or thinking about too much. When you're depressed is something about the past that you keep holding on to. When you're in the present, it's an opportunity to be at peace. And the way I look at the words, I'm just vibing. I just feel like I'm just vibing in the peace, in the present moment. And um, so what I did with uh, Puma we made this hoodie. I wish I had it with me right now, but um, it's got the Jufu logo on the front and it says, I'm just vibing going on the back. Uh, I designed it on Photoshop 
it's a little cool design and um seeing it all come together was dope like tiktok sent a bunch of like lighting equipment to my house and it's it was a little weird because like covid so like if covid wasn't a thing i probably would have to fly out to la or something like that and do a shoot with them but they sent lighting kits to my house and like had me like on zoom doing like the fashion show with the greens like bro it was a lot but um it was really cool and um my mom has a has a background in fashion too so i'm very into like i'm very into streetwear and um yeah man <laughs> definitely um i want to one of my biggest inspirations when it comes to fashion specifically rest in peace bro i don't know how like bro virgil man virgil bro, rest in peace yeah that was a, a shock legend, but I, i'm still i still can't process that like it still hasn't hit me bro but yeah bro virgil off white like he's just an awesome mastermind bro like and he's he's someone who's definitely inspires like not only like when it comes to some clothes and not this because this is very simple but um the way i like to like lay things out in terms of like a website or like the text on my music video like the way i have the title and like where i position my name and stuff like that heavy heavily inspired by the way that he would that he would necessarily um position things and i think he's he's super awesome i i i wish he was still here man i really wish i got to meet him rest in peace of virgil it was a shock to me when i heard the news because it was so unexpected and this just brings it back not just people passing away of natural natural causes but the violence that you've been you spoke about earlier in this in interview how you feel about the violence that's been going on and just with artists and you mentioned Brooklyn specifically what's your take on everything that's going on out here with violence against hip hop artists well honestly man i want people to understand and see that like the, here's the the way that the way that i view the world personally um i see everyone as for the innocent child that they were born to be and society and the world around them their environment molds and shapes them into something else and because i view the world that way it's like i honestly can only just just pray that people can see themselves within one another more often and and put the differences aside because at the end of the day we're all one human race and we all collectively share consciousness this is the way i see things and I just, I really wanted to see everyone holding hands, bro, at the end of the day. Um, I, I don't want to see anybody hurting each other, especially when it comes to people hurting people of the, the same color of the skin. Like, bro, I just want to see unity and and I want to I want to bring unity with my music and just through through my life. I want to inspire people to come together. I want to inspire people to just do do the things that they want to do, be happy doing the things they want to do and love each other. Period. That's, <laughs> that's you for great. <laughs> that's what you're doing. Keep promoting and spreading that positivity. We need more people like you in this game. Get used to me. EP drop recently. You have a debut album on the way that you're working for. So guess used to me was my first out al- was my first project with, uh, with Island. Uh, I dropped that in 2020 spring time. Um, and the, the idea behind the title of that song was just get used to me making this transition from very simple, straight to the point, get used to me making this transition from social media into music because I'm here to stay. And I'm also dropping, yes, going into a song project. I'm dropping an EP, um, I haven't decided if it's going to be an EP, but it's only going to be five songs Um, on my birthday, March 5th this year. So that is like a month and a half or so away. And I'm also dropping an NFT collection on my birthday. So it's, it's a lot, a lot of buildup. I don't even know uh, what the title is going to be yet, but it's going to be very cool. Get Used to Me was a very like versatile project because I wanted to show people like my different skill sets and the different types of music that I can make. This project is going to be more, more of like cohesive with one. Every song is going to be 
kind of tied together. And the vision for that is to have five different visuals with that, that all tie together. So essentially it could be part one, part two, part three, part four, part five with the videos. And um, I'm just looking forward to putting things together like that. Cause I have the ability to put it together, the vision and everything is here and I'm, I'm very excited. I haven't, I haven't done a, I haven't done, I've always, I've always been fascinated with like albums that have songs that go into each other. Like you ever hear like an album, like the first, second, third song, you don't hear this, the break in between. Oh yeah. I've always been obsessed with those. And um, I want to create my first one of those. And I haven't seen any of those with a visual, with a visual for each one. So I think it'd be sick. That would be. I've heard in other interviews, people ask you about features and you'd be interested in doing some features. Have you been able to link up with some people of any interest that you've been wanting to work with? I haven't done many features um, at all yet. I, do, I, I caught it a couple of different, a couple of studio advisors with different artists. Um, shout out to T.O.B. Duke. Um He's, he's, he's super dope. Very, very, very great mindset at his age. Um, but I haven't really collaborated with a lot of artists and I definitely would like to, um, one of my biggest rules with collaboration is having the same intention long-term with the music, um, as the artist that I'm working with. I don't really pay attention to like the short gain of a, of a feature. I know sometimes people just do features just to get their numbers up. And I can tell from you and, and what you're that. saying right now, you're not about that. <laughs> and I don't blame same you. Same thing with like, same thing with brand deals. Like, yeah. with like just to ex explain what I mean by that is like, you'll never see me promoting, like, like I've been reached out to like by vaping companies and stuff like that. And they got a bag to give, but it's like, I don't want to be promoting vaping to my audience when I know it's going to be harmful for them. And essentially I, I just, I like to think forward and look long-term and, and make sure I do the things that is going to protect my brand and aligns with what my purpose is and aligns with what my soul is. I just, I want to keep things like that. And I think that's what allows me to get opportunities like world strides and definitely want to keep it that way. Anything else, Jufu, that you want to let my audience and listeners know and your fans who watch the interview after, if they're even tuned in right now? Oh, I'm dropping a song called FOMO. <laughs> a song called FOMO this, this uh, February 5th. Mm -hmm. I'm shooting a music video. Um, shooting a video, music video in like two weeks. And uh, this song is going to be very crypto related. Um, so definitely just keep an eye out for the song, FOMO. The song is going to be dollar sign FOMO, like like a cryptocurrency would have the dollar sign in front of it. And um, I'm very excited to put that song out. It's a very, very strong message behind it. And I think the women are going to love it too. So for all the ladies out there too, FOMO. <laughs> <laughs> we can look forward to that record. I'll get in the rotation once you drop it. Jufu, I want to thank you for coming on the show here tonight. It was truly an honor having you here, man. And you're really working out here. I applaud you, especially for spreading positivity in this game because you're able to call out what's going on out here and putting all the other negative aside and saying, let's come together in the form of unity and let's just keep focusing on ourselves. And don't sell out for the money all the time. That's the main thing too. Amen. I think there's there's no reason why... I mean, there's 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 so much room for us to all win and all that we have to do is come together man be less selfish be more selfless and and show more just more unconditional love for one another because that's the only way to really make the world a brighter place and to be more fulfilled I, one thing i learned i want to say like two years ago is the secret to life is giving and um that that's like where you and what i mean by secret to life is like you really get true fulfillment when, when you're giving back. And um, I really just want people to share more. <laughs> <laughs>
And I'm sure with people like you in this world, it, it'll work eventually. Eventually you're, you're working towards that when you drop the new project. Yeah. A hundred percent. When you drop the new project, man, we'd love to have you back on the show to talk about it. More than happy to do so for everybody watching. Follow your dreams. Don't box yourself into any lane. Do what you want to do. Do what makes you happy. Much love. Let them know where they can follow you on Instagram and Twitter too. You get your following Everything, up there. Everything's at Jufu. Search Jufu, J-U-F-U on any platform. And you should simply just find me like that. And there you have it. Jufu, I want to thank you again, man. Keep going out here. I'm looking forward to the upcoming releases. Enjoy the rest of your night and stay safe, man, out here. Thank you, Max. Yeah. Much love. No doubt. Peace, man. Peace.